On deck for us today, what's behind the decision to keep the border closed to Canadians? We'll ask a local member of Congress, as all of our Western New York lawmakers seem to be on the same page, no matter their party, that those fully vaccinated ought to be able to come here. Plus confusion on the vaccine mandate for some health care workers in New York State. We have the question and the answer from the State Health Department. And here's how Pro Football Talk put it. The saber rattling over the new Buffalo Bills Stadium officially has begun. Our NFL insider joins us later with the new developments on the stadium as we also prepare you for preseason game number two. And we welcome you to the Friday edition of our town hall. I'm Michael Wooten. Kate is off. The symbolic sorry we're closed sign is still up at the U.S. border with Canada. Despite Canada allowing fully vaccinated Americans to visit, our border is still limited to essential travel only. The U.S. government making the announcement official earlier today, the extension. As a result, it remains pretty quiet at our border crossings. This is a live look at the U.S. side of the Peace Bridge. Few Canadians able to enter the plaza and then continue on into western New York. The vast majority of our politicians of both parties say it is time to change the policy. Despite that, the U.S. border will remain closed until at least September 21st. The closure has been extended month after month, dating back to March 21st of last year. That's 517 days ago. Of course, there is an economic impact for us. Prior to the pandemic, trade and investment between New York State and Canada was valued at $30 billion. Much of the trade is still happening with truck traffic still allowed, but the travel, not so much. And joining us now is Representative Brian Higgins, a Democrat who has led the bipartisan calls in Congress for the U.S. to reopen the border, at least to fully vaccinated Canadians. Congressman, uh, we appreciate you being here. It seems like these announcements really come with little fanfare. Um, D.C. reporters rarely ask about these decisions. So as we're all trying to look for answers, what are you hearing in terms of the reason for another month of disclosure? Well, not enough. There's no justification for this. All of us uh, for the past 17 months have been told uh, to follow the science, to follow the facts, and we're following the science, and we're following the facts, and we're following the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidance on COVID. And it says that if you are fully vaccinated, you have strong immunity uh, from giving COVID or getting COVID. And when you take into account the Delta variant, uh, now, you know, people should be wearing face masks as a practical matter because it's the same virus that is highly, highly, highly contagious. Uh, so if you do all of those things uh, that we've been told to do, you should be able to cross the border. Americans going into Canada, Canadians coming into the United States. Now think about this. If you fly uh, into Buffalo from Canada, uh, that, that works. Uh, if you try to drive into uh, Buffalo from Canada, it doesn't work. How does that make any sense? Uh, so we have been following uh, the admonishments uh, by public health officials locally, uh, regionally and nationally, and people who have done the right things to protect their families, their neighbors and their binational neighbors uh, should be able to cross the border. Uh, Canadians who can't get a vaccine in Canada uh, should be able to drive to Buffalo to get uh, uh, vaccinated. It just, it doesn't make any sense. And you know, the exemptions that have been offered are, are all arbitrary, having nothing to do with science, fact, or data. So it's obviously highly frustrating. Uh, the U.S. Western New York economy is highly dependent uh, on the Canadian consumer, uh, whether it's professional sports, whether it's health care, uh, whether it's, you know, 3,000 Canadians uh, go to colleges in Buffalo and Western New York. So uh, it just doesn't seem as though the administration is doing a very good job here, and they're not communicating what the vision uh, for the opening of the U.S. border to Canadians is. You mentioned the science, and I want to show our viewers on the screen right now. One of the confusing parts about all of this centers around how the pandemic is playing out in the U.S. versus Canada, and we're showing the numbers on the screen. If you look at it on a per capita basis, the U.S. is experiencing almost eight times more new cases each day than Canada. That is adjusted for population, so there's a lot more virus here. And also, Canada has significantly a bigger share of its population fully vaccinated. So if this is based on the science, yep. Do you wonder why Canada is allowing Americans in, but America won't allow Canadians in? And how does the White House respond to that? 
Well, they don't, and that's the problem. And they have an obligation to respond uh, to Congress generally, but to the American people and uh, the people in Buffalo and Western New York. Look, the new cases, as you know, are disproportionately uh, amongst those who are unvaccinated. And if you are vaccinated, if you've done the right thing uh, based on trying to keep your family safe and friends safe and neighbors safe, you should be able to travel freely. That is what we have been told. And that's what the science is. That's what the CDC guidance is. So the White House position on this and that of uh, their Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are in direct conflict, and that needs to be addressed. Uh, we're losing another tourism season uh, between the United States and Canada. Uh, people who love each other, who have been separated for 17 months, should be able to uh, reunite. Uh, people that want to visit properties that they own here in Western New York should be able to do that if they've done what uh, has been recommended by uh, public health officials. Congressman, how much of a factor is the Mexican border? We've heard from sources that the U.S. government wants to open both borders at the same time. We know there are problems down south. How much of a factor is that? And to you, would it be acceptable to allow in fully vaccinated Canadians while keeping the southern border closed? Well, certainly, they're two very, very different borders. There are 120 land uh, ports of entry between the United States and Canada, longest contiguous uh, border between two countries in the world. Uh, the relationship between the United States and Canada is entirely different from that of the southern border. Uh, they're not the same borders. Uh, the only thing they share is the name of a border. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, we have uh, uh, integrated economies uh, and uh, they're different uh, there, there are different challenges and opportunities at the borders. So the U.S.-Canadian border needs to be looked at separately. If that is a justification uh, for uh, continuing to keep uh, the Canadian border, U.S.-Canadian border closed, it's, it's without uh, rationale. It's, uh, these decisions have been arbitrary. You know, keep in mind, you know, the National Hockey League uh, received an exemption owing not to the science, but to the NHL uh, playoff schedule. Uh, what does that say to people who have been separated for 17 months from family members and loved ones, uh, people who have cottages uh, uh, along the Canadian shorelines of Lake Erie or in Ellicottville, New York, uh, from Canada? So uh, when, when an exemption has been made, it's not based on the science. It's based on arbitrary uh, considerations, and that's highly unfair uh, to those people who have been denied access uh, to the United States from Canada. Finally, before we run out of time, I want to ask you quickly about Afghanistan. We heard from President uh, Biden again this afternoon. Western New York has always been a very welcoming place for refugees. Do you know at this point how many Afghanis may end up coming here? And we've heard from other members of Congress that their offices are having to work to help facil facilitate safe travel for either Americans who are in Afghanistan or some allies who are eligible. Are you or, or is anyone in your office having to do that? Yeah, we are. I am. Uh, my office is. We're trying to assist many people. You know, the Afghan citizens who have been interpreters, who have been navigators, uh, their lives are in jeopardy now with the Taliban takeover. Uh, it's a very, very difficult situation there. I've been there many, many times under difficult circumstances. Uh, it's been a mess. It is a mess. And obviously the withdrawal, the evacuation uh, could have been uh, better coordinated. That said, uh, we have an obligation to uh, those Afghan uh, citizens who have helped uh, the United States over the past two decades to ensure that they have a safe uh, evacuation wherever they decide to end up. And I think we all uh, have an obligation to ensure that that happens uh, in Congress. Congressman Brian Higgins is a Democrat who represents New York's 26th district here in Western New York, joining us from Niagara Falls. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. Good to be with you, Michael. And back to the border, we also heard today from local Republican Congressman Chris Jacobs. He said in part, quote, our shared border should have been open months ago. This administration's failure to do so has forced our small businesses to suffer economically from another missed tourism season. And more heartbreaking, they have prolonged the suffering of thousands of families. And we got reaction today from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He said that he will continue to work with the U.S. government to coordinate a reopening, but, quote, every country gets to make their own decisions on how to best keep their citizens safe.